Welcome everybody. Um, we're on the Hona YouTube channel. Um, this is the Hona live stream. Finally, we are back. This is episode 57. Um, wow, it's November 11th. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, please say hello in the chat. Let us know from where you're tuning in. I'm very Thank excited to about in. today. Uh, please say hello in the chat. And Let I can already you... hear myself in the background. <laughs> that was me. Yeah. I was trying to... I was trying to double dip over here. So, Danny just gave a sign. Please welcome Danny Clinch uh, from New Jersey. Um, for those of yeah. you who uh, don't know him, I mean, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Very excited about this. Um, and I hope you out there too, let us know if you have any questions. I'm sure you're open to any question that's music and photography related <laughs> anything you got throw it at me so Ready. for everybody out there who maybe does know about danny um danny clinch he's one of the premier photographers across the entire music scene but also a real harmonica um that's what we call our discord server by the way the harmonicats discord server <laughs> i like it and it was wonderful to at least like online on instagram see you on stage it was only two weeks ago you joining the foo fighters on stage playing harmonica <laughs> yeah it was pretty cool that's fantastic so maybe we're also going to talk about that you should yeah. check uh danny out um on all his websites and social media accounts just check out the description box below so yeah i'm very excited um so Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, there are people tuning in from North Carolina, from Russia, Florida, yeah. Berlin. Wow. Oh, is there a Berlin in New Jersey? There is. Okay. Imagine that. There's John McCall from there. <laughs> All right. It's crazy. Up, John? So oh, that's yeah. where you where you are located right now, right? I'm in New Jersey. That's right. Yeah. And basically, also where you grew up. Yep, I'm in the uh, in the town I grew up in right now. Uh, I also spend a lot of time in Asbury Park, New Jersey, which is uh, a really wonderful, very creative and artful seaside community. Um, uh, my gallery, which is called Transparent Clinch Gallery, exactly, is yeah, right in Asbury Park, and we're a block from the ocean. Uh, we love it there. My wife and I started the gallery there uh, a couple of uh, years ago. And along with our friend Tina, and um, it's uh, it's a great spot, really. Uh, Asbury is an incredible town, musically, uh, art-wise, great restaurants. It's uh, the architecture is really cool. It's like Art Deco style for those of you who don't know. And uh, and of course you have the Stone Pony, which is where Bruce Springsteen has played over a thousand times, probably. <laughs> oh yeah. Wow, that sounds yeah. great. And the Transparent Gallery is really like a place for everyone who loves music. I mean, I, of course, I checked out some videos online I couldn't visit yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, we have live music there. We have, um, you know, we have, uh, we not only um, are a gallery, but it's not a, it's not a white glove, really uppity type gallery it's more of a community hub for people to come and hang out we have great furniture in there uh mid-century modern furniture that tina brings in we have uh, vinyl you can buy vinyl there uh you, we have live music we have a back line with a drum kit and bass amp and all that so we always have jams in there whether they're planned or not uh and um you know families come in with the kids and we always tell the kids like hey go go play on the drum set go ahead you know the kids are like what can i play on the drums all right oh, yeah. they get it they're playing the drums and stuff so uh that's been that's been really fun and uh and it's just it's a great spot and uh we love asbury park and um we love music yeah that's wonderful i mean i always wanted to play the drums when i was a kid obviously my parents didn't, didn't allow me to get the drum set <laughs> but what would you say how how did your like, love for music um yeah came into your life in first place um i would say my love for music came in you know when i was a kid i remember um 
my parents always had a an eight track cassette that had uh, 50s music on it. So it would have Buddy Holly, Elvis, Richie Valens, The Big Bopper, uh, you know, stuff like that. And I, I just grew up loving that music. And, and, and music of the 50s is really is kind of, you know, blues based. It's early rock and roll. Uh, it really, uh, I think that's what seeded my excitement about the blues. And, um, and so I remember just listening to a lot of 50s music when I was younger. Uh, and then, you know, my friend's older brother started turning us on to the Allman Brothers and Bob Seger and Bruce Springsteen and Leonard Skinner and uh, bands like that, Led Zeppelin. And uh, I always knew that I, you know, me personally, I, I love blues harmonica. And I, I always, I didn't realize how much blues influenced rock and roll until later on in my life when oh, a yeah. friend of mine turned me on to, you know, I knew who Muddy Waters was, but like somebody started to turn me on when I was, I was assisting a photographer named Timothy White and me and his, uh, he and I and his other assistant um, would spend a lot of time traveling in a van or waiting for people to show up for like a celebrity photo shoot or whatever. And so Russell was turning me on to, and Tim and Timothy were turning me on to, um, you know, Muddy Waters, uh, Howlin' Wolf, Sonny Boy, Junior Wells, Little Walter, you know, uh, you know, and early R and B and gospel and, and things like that. And I was like, wow, I see where this rock and roll came from, you know. Okay. So it's it's quite obvious now to me, but at the time it was really, uh, really mind blowing for me. So. Um, that's kind of how I developed into loving blues and, and, and getting into it and, uh, and that, and discovering the harmonica. What was there like a particular player, uh, who's playing you heard for the first time? Um, I, I probably heard like the Beatles harmonica for the first okay. time. Yeah. You know? Uh, so that's probably the first harmonica that I heard in popular music that I recognize and maybe some Stevie wonder. Uh, and that, um, but the first blues harmonica player that I kind of really latched onto uh, was Junior Wells. And I felt like, you know, when I listen, when I was playing, learning to play, um, I just, when I would listen to little Walter, I just would be like, I'd throw my hands up in the air and go, well, I'm never going to be able to play that, you know? Yeah. And I just like, well, I can't even try to play that. So when I would listen to Junior Wells specifically, like Alone in Acoustic with Buddy Guy, like those songs, for some reason, there were little licks in there and little riffs that that I could play. And so I felt like, oh, well, I'll, you know, so I really that I responded to the way that Junior Wells, it's deceivingly simple. It's not simple, uh, it, but it's it seems simple. And there were a couple of licks in there that I could steal and it made it gave me confidence to keep playing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um that's the thing in general right like as soon as somebody can do something very well it always looks easy or feels oh, yeah. easy <laughs> right <laughs> because exactly. like as soon as you get good at something you also people also get lazy like in a positive kind of way <laughs> yeah 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 um, uh but no i i loved it and i would go in new york city i was living in new york city um in the late 80s and uh i would go see Junior Wells uh, at a place called Manny's Car Wash or Chicago Blues. I would see James Cotton, Luther Allison, you know, Charlie Musselwhite and, uh, and folks like that. And I was always going out and trying to hear some, some great blues. Yeah. Well, yeah, I remember traveling to New York, visiting a harmonic player friend of mine. Um, he's my age and he got very, very good. Um, His name is Jay Gaunt, and uh, I stayed at his place for some time, and we also went out to hear some players. That was always, already some years ago. Um, but at that point, I wasn't like, I was still underage, and I didn't get into blues, Terra Blues in oh, New yeah, York Tara City. Blues. I think yeah. Dennis Grunling was playing there. I love Dennis. So yeah. we could only, like, see him after the show. <laughs> oh, man, that's too bad. <laughs> I, Dennis was, uh, I was taking some lessons from Dennis uh, over the, uh, oh, wow, yeah. the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, I remember taking some lessons from him too. And that's when I started to, when I really listened to him and getting just like getting to know that he plays everything Tomp Block. I was like a 100% Tomp Blocker for a very long time. <laughs> that's crazy. Because I felt I got to do this too. If he can do it. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm just in the middle of starting to get it. You know, I can do a little tongue blocking, but you know, the, the truth is, is I, you know, I don't, you know, I play in a blues band and I play with my friends and I don't really, you know, my main focus is my photography and filmmaking career. And so when I do get to play, it's often, you know, uh, just getting up and playing versus, you know, a lot of practicing. So right. to my to my detriment, I don't practice that much, but uh same anyway, here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. But I heard uh, you're playing, it's just it's mind blowing. To sort out this question by Jeff, does he play the harp or just take picks? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll let you decide. I got both right here. There it is. And can you tell uh, us what was first? Did you first get your first harmonica or like a camera? You know, I, it's funny. I probably got them around the same time. My, my okay. grandfather played, you know, played like some folk songs on the harmonica. And so I, I had gotten one then and I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was, it was interesting. And, uh, but then, you know, I took up photography and then, um, and then I just started to, uh, after meeting that photographer and his assistant and my friend R Russell, that's when I started to pick up the harmonica again. And I started to learn to play uh some blues and at the time i was photographing a band called blind melon and um they were one of the early bands that allowed me to be in the recording studio with them on the tour bus backstage and all that and and i'd you know been playing some harmonic and i had been taking lessons from adam gussow in set oh, yeah. in uh yeah back before the internet he would advertise in the back of the village voice in new york city and so I would call him and we would meet in Washington Square Park and he would give me lessons. And so I was starting to get some lessons with Adam and I was feeling, you know, I was enjoying it, you know, and, and I was at a, a concert with Blind Melon and it was Blind Melon uh, opening for um, Soundgarden who were opening for Neil wow, Young. Wonderful. Yeah. And, uh, and I told the band when we were backstage earlier, I was there photographing and I said, you know, I, I play a little harmonica and, and Shannon said, oh, well, you should come up and jam with us. And I was like, no, no, no. I'm, I've, I've like played once at a barbecue. And, and he said, well, it's all a big barbecue. You know, it's a party. Just come out and play with us. It'll be fun. Yeah. And so I did, and I did have fun and I really enjoyed it. And, and, and I, I knew they were going to ask me to come out again and again. And so I started to really kind of pay a little more attention and tried to get better. Uh, so it was enjoyable to sit in with them and uh and to actually have that kind of musical conversation with another musician you know it's just like nothing better that's what that's what i love about about music is the you know is the camaraderie that you have with the other musicians the musical conversation you know you look around the stage and you see everybody's there in their groove and they're having such a good time and it's like i i just i told my kids and i tell anybody that'll listen that man playing an instrument is really uh it's 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 become such a big part of my life and it's, it really is fulfilling, uh, you know, for me. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Often like the spontaneous stuff is the best stuff too. Um, Absolutely. today somebody joined us playing Cajon. So, uh, that was very unexpected too. <laughs> oh, he was yeah. just there at the sound check and we didn't know that he was around. So he joined us for two songs. Um, and the funny thing is, like, so many people, pretty much everybody, had a harmonica as a child, right? And um, I think so. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so... Now, can you see the questions coming in? I can, yeah. I, I wonder if I can see the questions. Are there any if questions? If you check out the for them, I wonder. YouTube link, you should be able to read the chat, oh, too. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on the link. I'm gonna turn the chat off too. the. Yeah. I'm gonna turn off the volume. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on the link. I'm so, gonna, Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. Okay, that's Got good. 
So yeah, now we're both reading um, Hit Us With The Questions. <laughs> so obviously it's both photography and music for you and you found like that wonderful way of connecting the two basically and what you do with photography and filming is like just taking pictures of a lot of musicians and um, directing movies that have to do with music or directing live concert recordings and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and you're also involved in a festival that you organize with a team, um, the See Here Now Festival. Um, yes. So that's pretty new still, right? Yeah, we're in our third, uh, we were a fourth year in our third concert because we didn't get to do it last year, of course. Yeah. Uh, but it's been great. We've had a lot of uh, really good, um, you know, music there. We had, we have had Jack Johnson. We've had um, uh, the Lumineers, Dave Matthews Band, Pearl Jam, Blondie, Joan Jett, um, you know, and Social Distortion, on and on and on. It's just been it's a really incredible and there's music there is surfing during the uh middle of the day while the bands are playing yeah uh and then we have an art tent there which is basically it's art that i curate from the musicians who are playing the festival because there's a lot of musicians who are also artists and i ask them if they want to contribute and we we do a big exhibition uh in the middle of the festival and we sell the art uh, and we donate some money to a local charity. Okay. And that's really fun. Yeah. Is there still so, a band you really want to get on the lineup of the festival that hasn't played at the festival up until now? Uh, yeah, there's a couple. Yeah, there's a bunch. There's a bunch I'd like to see on there. Um, so we'll probably get them too. Yeah. Some point. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, yeah. But playing harmonica, you actually have your own band, or you're playing in a blues band. Um, yeah. Which uh, was formed in 1998. Um, and I read that the first jam session you played, you were joined by John McEnroe. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Which um, was very exciting for oh, me because I'm an avid tennis player. <laughs> oh yeah, right on. Well, John, you know, you know, he plays guitar. Uh, yeah, and he is uh, a lot of fun to be around. And um, our guitar player in the Tangiers Blues Band that I play in, his name is Chris Shiani. He has been friends with John for a really long time. He's an avid tennis player, and uh, our friend Chris and. Uh, so he used to be he used to tour with John around in his band. And so he's real friendly with John. So when we first played, John happened to be there and he, he showed up and brought a guitar and and uh, we had a little jam. And we've we've jammed with um, a lot of people have played with uh, Tangier's Blues Band. We have had um, we've had Jackson Brown, uh, Lucinda Williams, Charlie Musselwhite, Warren Haynes, yeah. um, Eddie Vedder. Bruce Springsteen, um, you know, we had a moment where uh, we were opening up a new, uh, they were reopening an old venue in Asbury Park called Asbury Lanes. It's a legendary music venue. And we were one of the bands that were playing along with Portugal the Man. And uh, and Bruce Springsteen was the MC, And so he, he texted me about a week before and said, hey, you know, what do you say? What do you think I could sit in with your band? And I was like, yeah, man, come on. And so we went through the songs that we were going to do. And and I, uh, uh, you know, he said, when are we going to rehearse? And I said, oh, well, let's rehearse, you know. And we <laughs> booked a place in New York City. We were like, we'll meet at Carol, Carol Music at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. He's like, all right, see you there. So we showed up at like 4 o'clock and played for two hours before he got in so that we were all really fired up and ready to go. And uh, he came in. We went through like five songs. It was incredible. And then, uh, you know, he showed up for sound check at the gig and, uh, he was doing the, uh, the Springsteen on Broadway at the time. And so I told, I, I thought to myself, he must be really itching to pick up an electric guitar and jump in with a, with a rockin' band. 
and uh, and he did, and we really rocked it out. It was really fun. Oh yeah, and there for everybody out there, there are definitely some videos on YouTube if you look for them. True. Some of these jams, yeah, yeah. And with the band, you not only play like very contemporary just blue stuff, but also uh, just like down date some current hits, which I really love. Um, it's such a such a beautiful way of like keeping keeping the blues alive too because there's so much blues still in music um yeah. but yeah, people our, our don't necessarily been, sense it yeah we try to do you know we do originals in the blues band but we also will take like uh you know don't judge a book by its cover and segue into you know lady gaga or you know something like that we do pump it up by elvis costello or fight for your right by the beastie boys and we turn them into blues yeah and uh you know it's really fun it's really it's a lot of fun yeah i feel like that's that's the way to go like um remembering a video of jason ritchie playing stay by Ri rihanna oh yeah amazing that's like yeah. the best way to just like yeah that's a beautiful <laughs> video <laughs> It's so good, so good. Um, and if we would have a look at your Spotify playlist, like what kind of music are you listening to right now? Um, you know, uh, I would say my Spotify playlist is uh, it's very it, it's eclectic. So, you know, I have the muddy waters uh over the pandemic i listened a lot to muddy waters live at mr kelly's and it's a really good harmonica blues uh jam and it's something that i was kind of studying uh so i really love that one and i've really gotten into um that jim Liban record do you know jim Liban? i don't know he's a blues harp player and he's it's really incredible it's um the record is uh jim Liban and the joel patterson trio And the guy is just, his heart playing is incredible. His lyrics are really good. It's, it's really incredible. And then I, I love uh, a band called The Red Devils, um, which was, um, uh, it was uh, Lester Butler was the heart player in that band. He passed away, sadly, through some hard living. But, um, but that band was really good. It's like, it's like punk rock blues, in my opinion. Uh, so I've been listening to that. I listen to um, My Morning Jacket. Uh, it was one of my favorite bands. I listen to uh, Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats. I like uh, Brittany Howard. Um, and I like, uh, you know, Brandy Carlisle. It's a new record. Um, you know, I, lo I love Willie Nelson. Uh, yeah. Johnny Cash. Uh, stuff like that. Yeah, obviously um, we had... Willie Nelson, some monica player on here on the Whole Alive too. <laughs> I mean, Mickey Raphael is my hero. I love that guy. Yeah, he he's like there are few harmonica players that are as versatile as he is. You know, this guy's played with Ray Charles, Willie Nelson, George Jones, Johnny Cash, the Highwaymen. You know, Chris Stapleton. Um, you know, he played that crazy lick on, I'm trying to think of what the, it was one of those hair metal bands back in the day. He played like one of the, one of the licks on, on one of those songs. I can't, I can't think of it at the moment. Um, he's, I mean, he's just played with everybody, Miles Davis. I mean, he can play jazz, blues, country, you name it. He can do it and he can do it as good as anyone. Yeah. I love that guy. Yeah. He's a mentor. He's a real mentor for me. I, I, um, he's always really you know, encouraged me to keep playing and, uh, and same with, um, Charlie muscle light. Uh, I've gotten to know Charlie and he's just a real sweet, sweetheart. And, uh, you know, he's a wealth of information and both of those guys don't claim to be good teachers, you know, Yeah. but they're still there for you and they're still there to encourage you and to give you some, some ideas of how to, how to raise your chops, you know? Yeah. And at the same time, there's so much stuff that you can also like, Yeah, just learn from these people that you just can't learn on your own, like woodshedding, basically, like or just like stuff that you can experience on the road, that you can learn on the road, playing live with bands and stuff like that. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to get that insight or someone to give you a shortcut, a shortcut to the good stuff. You know, there's no shortcut to, you know, there's no shortcut to not practicing, but there are shortcuts to some good ideas. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I definitely checked out that little jam with Bruce Springsteen on YouTube. Um, and yeah. of course, like, as all the time, everybody's very interested about gear and stuff. So yeah. um, do you, uh, would you like to tell us which kind of harmonicas you play? And uh, yeah. maybe even like your setup if you play live, like amplifier and microphone? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I... I've tried a lot of different harmonicas. I and I I got I started to get into uh, these cross harps crossovers rather, these guys, and I like them. Um, but I just keep going back, you know. For me, uh, and I'm not always I'm not a real super technical person, so I'm that way in my photography and I'm that way in my music. So um, I I just really love the special twenty. I just yeah. feel like it has all the things I need that. The, the comb is plastic. It doesn't cut my mouth up. And uh, it just seems to be the most versatile. So I've, I've gone in like little circles where I'm like, oh, you know, I love the blues harp back in the day. And then they stopped making them. And then they like made these new blues harps, which I didn't like. And then I got the, um, the crossovers. And I was like, wow, I really like these. They're bright. And when you're playing in a loud club with a loud guitar player like I am, you know, you've got to have, cut through the, the bullshit, right? <laughs> so... Um, but then I just kind of circled back to the, uh, to the special 20. So I like the special 20 and then Charlie muscle white turned me on to the guy named blow me away productions who make right. uh, uh, the, the harp microphones. So I treated myself and I designed my own microphone, um, and had him build it. Uh, and it's, it sounds really great. You could plug into a PA and it would sound, it would sound pretty good, you know? Uh, and then in terms of the amplifiers, I've been, I have a little Fender Champ and I like that, how it sounds because you can really, you know, crank it up and really ride it and it gets broken up and dirty and stuff like that. And I also have been playing um, one of the smaller Supro amp amplifiers, uh, the, the newer reissue ones. Uh, I know the folks over at Supro and they're super, they're really super cool people. And they've given us some guitars and some amplifiers for the gallery. So we play a lot through the Supros at the gallery. Um, but I, I would like the amplifiers if the, he hadn't given me one. <laughs> I'd still like them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's a great little, it's a great so it's little paid ad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, but it's a great, you know, it sounds great. Um, you know, it's, so I, that's, that's my rig really. Um, You know, I do listen to what other people are doing and I see how they're doing it and stuff. And I, I, um, you know, that's, that's where I ended up with mine. What about you? What do you play through? Um, I mean, I love the special 20 and regarding the co the, the, the cover plates. Um, I mean, my hands are comparably small, so, um, I'm not a huge fan of like the cover plates that are open on the sides. Um, mm -hmm. So it's easier for, easier for me to cup the special 20 cover plate. Um, and that German guy, Thomas Hanker, he's like a Honer affiliated customizer. Yeah. He just uh, puts it together for me. So this is basically a regular Marine band, but with the special mm -hmm. 20 cover plates on. What? That, that's cheating. It's a mongrel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool wow that's nice I and like that it. feels very comfortable um yeah. but yeah there was some for some time well, i was problem. really into the crossover too and stuff when i when the still played a lot of blues gigs and played through amplifiers and played tonk blocking all the time and stuff like that yeah. um yeah. but now i'm not doing that too often even though i would like to but I don't have like a blues setting um, I can take on tour or play concerts with right now. Um, I like this microphone for acoustic stuff. Nice. All right. Well, because it's not that 
you gotta like you need like a broken heart or something so you can get out and play some blues <laughs> definitely yeah um yeah we'd love to play some more blues some more amplified stuff um yeah. sometimes i'm recording some blues for other people and but then usually they just like do the distortion stuff in in the box right so <laughs> right 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 yeah well, well. and we played a blues today but it was more like a jazz blues i would say mm -hmm. yeah um, i imagine maybe the blues gets gets tiring for a, a virtuoso harmonica player like yourself there was just the journey that was proposed to me through the internet right um i was just learning about the blues and i wanted to get better on the instrument which also has to do with like just learning the banding and overblow techniques and the only thing you see online is just like people playing jazz right yeah so it was never the case that i was a big jazz fan it was just me wanting to get better on the instrument and that was what got me yeah. into jazz <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. So I like to improvise, but I don't like to be called jazz musician. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, obviously, Frank is writing into the chat, play a blues. I mean, maybe at some point we can play something too. <laughs> it's always weird to yeah. play on the on the stream. It's always just like maybe trading choruses or something. We could, but you, you know, I, you're going to uh, embarrass me. I think that's what's going to happen. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and it, I heard uh, from other videos I checked out that uh, I mean, improvising is all about being in the moment and talking about taking pictures. You try to be in the moment too. Um, and really just like capturing these in between moments where maybe like the the artist or like the person um in front of the camera isn't like focusing on oh yeah no we're taking a picture um so would you consider what you do improvising too <laughs> absolutely yeah that's a great question that's a great observation you know it is it is uh it's improvisation you know uh with the camera i feel like you know you could say it's your other instrument you know and you're like when i'm photographing a live show or even when i'm doing a portrait of someone you know there's i am i am interested in them being distracted uh yeah to, in a sense, and so that i can just kind of get their guard down and and get the photograph so um yeah it, it is it is improvisation and i and i feel like i think also because i play music a lot of the musicians that i photograph uh, you know, I can just sort of speak a different language than people who don't play music, you know, and I think it, it really is a benefit, you know, for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because like, I, I guess, or like obviously it's like, doing this has a lot to do with like, yeah, with, with some of the people you're taking pictures of, like, building the relationship with them and also building mutual trust um, over the years. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is, it is. It's it's relationships are everything, you know. I'm sure even in even playing music, of course. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, in fo in photography as well, it is relationships are really important. And then at the same time, thinking about the the improvising aspect, you also have like the the circumstances are always very different and sometimes very unexpected too. Um, whatever the venues are different the setting is different, the studio is different or whatever, the lighting or something doesn't work, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, every situation so is different. you got to deal with all of these different situations or maybe yeah. the the person in front of the camera isn't really in the mood of like taking picture. Yeah. And there's yeah, still something, of, something great yeah. to capture in that moment. For sure. Yeah, it's a tag team. A lot of times if I'm by myself, I'll distract people in any way that I can. But if I have my crew, if I have a crew, if it's a bigger shoot, we play some some James Brown music or, 
you know, something good. And, uh, and, and we just, I, I encourage people to engage in the, in the art with the subject so that I can sort of distract them. And when you're photographing musicians, it is always good to put their instrument uh, in their hand so that they can, it really hold on to it. Body. Yeah. It, it, That's it, a problem it, it with changes. harmonica. <laughs> you get nothing well, to you hold. <laughs> <laughs> if you just put it in your hand, you probably feel better. Yeah. Helps you, helps you relax for sure. Yeah, I mean, I I started to started to do this and like holding like four of them in one hand. Oh, well, that's fancy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so that's maybe one way, or are there even other ways for you to just make the person in front of the camera feel comfortable? Um, yeah, I mean, that's one of the ways I think it's just, um, relationships. It's, uh, you know, it's treating people fairly too, just treating people the way you want to be treated, uh, and treating the people around you, uh, you know, with respect. And I think when people notice that they just, they understand that, you know, that, uh, you know, they can, they can be relaxed around me and my camera. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I always love that, and I, I feel that's very important to me. And I see that with everybody uh, who can do something very well, um, just that that people really, you can see that people do enjoy what they are doing. Yeah. Um, that's sometimes even the reason for me to not like bands. If I can't see that they enjoy what they are doing in that very moment. Um, uh, I feel way more engaged if I see that and I remember that from like just like taking pics, press pictures myself and working with photographers like if I see that they enjoy the doing and smile or something while taking the pictures I mean that helps tremendously yeah no, no true yeah because it uh, you know it, it it'll catch on to everybody in the room if, if if I'm having a good time doing what I do and getting into it, uh, it it's contagious for sure. Um, yeah. And, you know, being prepared, like, you know, same thing with music, being prepared, uh, not wasting people's time is also just a sign of respect, you know, being ready when yeah. they show up, getting, being on point. It's very important. Yeah. I mean, I guess sometimes you have a lot of time to take pictures whatever for for an album cover or something sometimes there are some situations where it's like only you can go backstage and have three minutes to maybe take a picture yeah and um i heard that you already also had the feeling that you yourself became more comfortable with photographing big stars um with the time Sure. Because you yeah, I, yeah. enjoy I, the doing more and more. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think, you know, it's when you're younger, uh, you feel like you have the energy to to bring to the table. You've got good energy. You have ideas. You're like really, you know, anxious to do some work. And, and so you can really ride that energy. And it's great. And as you get older, um, you you sort of realize how important experience is. So you go into a room that you're going to photograph someone in and you can pretty much find out right away, like where you're going to do the photograph and how you're yeah. going to light it, if you're going to light it and things like that. When you're younger, you're just kind of like throwing it all out there and you're just kind of winging it, you know? Um, and then, you know, as you get older, you, you realize, well, I've done this enough. I, the chances are I'm not going to screw it up too bad, you know? Um, and you come prepared with your ideas and then you come prepared to pivot when your idea isn't working out. You know, you have to be ready to change course uh, throughout um, a photo session when you need to. And probably the same with music. Yeah. And for like most of your photo sessions, um, do the people being photographed or like the artists, do they usually come up with your with ideas or are you often the person who has to have the ideas of where to take the pictures or like yeah. what to capture? That's a good question. Uh, and, the, and the answer is that 
it's a little bit of both. Some people have a lot of ideas, which is exciting. And some people have a few ideas, which are nice because we come together and we collaborate. Uh, it's always a collaboration, even if someone doesn't come with ideas. It's, it's what are you presenting to me? How are you presenting yourself? Um, so um, it, it, it's a little bit of both. I'm, off, I'm always prepared with my ideas and what I have ready to do. And if I have an opportunity to speak with the uh, subject beforehand, you know, we can come up with some ideas on a collab in a collaborative way. Um, or you just show up and they have some ideas as well. And then sometimes people are like, I have no ideas. I'm here for you. Whatever you need me to do, just tell me, you know, and yeah. that's fine too. That works. Okay. There's some uh, harmonica questions coming in from Mick, I guess. Um, so he says, to me, the harp is an amazing instrument um, and it's very underrated. Do you have, I mean, like walking through the music world for a long time, uh, do you feel like there's a reason to it? <laughs> uh, is it, what, what, there's a reason that the harmonica is underrated and yeah. difficult? Um, well, yeah, because you could, anybody could pick it up and put it in their mouth. And if they're, if, if you are in the right key, you can, you can almost fake it easier than most, than you could with a guitar or with a piano, because, you know, you just have to blow and draw, blow and draw. Uh, and, you know, so, so I guess it, there, it, there's a false, uh, sense that you could play the harmonica pretty easily and, and be good at it. You know, and, and you can yeah. see it in, in, in popular music. You can see people show up, you know, even big artists who want to bust out the harmonica for something. And, and it's, it's good. It adds texture and it adds a little bit of a different flavor to a song. Um, and I think it, that's great. Um, but, you know, to really be able to play it, you really, you know, you really have to put the time in and you have to learn. There's a, so many subtleties, I think, that people don't understand. Um, and to be and to be honest, I admittedly uh, consider myself, you know, not a great harmonica player. I, I consider myself someone who can play the harmonica. Yeah. And I try to use my sense of soulfulness in my playing. I, I, I always feel like I play too much and I try to play less. These are all things that want like that help me feel like I'm a better harmonica player, not even by the way I play, but but how I play, you know, how much I don't play. Um, those sort of things are the tools that I'm using to sound better than I might be. Yeah. Uh, aside from the fact that I'm sitting in with Pearl Jam or the Foo Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> I just let them nice. do their thing and I just like, whoop, whoop, whoop. No, go, no, this is great. Yeah, and I mean, um, at the same time, the, I feel maybe it's like the blow draw thing or whatever. Um, the instrument has like, a magical taste to it. I mean, I guess every famous artist or like every band, every leader um, of a band at, playing at a big festival, if he or she puts the harmonica into his or her mouth and just blows the drawers in the same key, I mean, the audience loves you. It, yeah. It's like, it's it always is. a special moment. It doesn't matter how, how good is. the playing is. Right. Right. I think that's not the case with yeah. other instruments. Yeah, true. I mean, you know, I'm so lucky because I, you know, I'll go out to a show and I literally, I bring, I have this little harmonica wallet and I'll put like four, four harmonicas in it. And what happened the other night at the Foo Fighters show was I was photographing the show and I was on the side of the stage and Dave looked over and saw me there and just... I guess it popped into his head like Danny always has harmonicas yeah. like but I hadn't really played with them in a couple of years and and uh and he's like you know Danny Clinch got to get some harmonica come on up here man I was like <laughs> okay I kind of like okay I'm glad I had stuck this in my bag of course and I just dumped out the four harmonicas I had in there and I said what key are you guys in and they were like uh we're in we're in the key of uh A minor and I was like, oh, geez, don't give me no minor nonsense here. And so I just grabbed my D harmonica because yeah. it was loud, loud as could be. 
and uh, and I just went out there and just started, you know, riffing on this this riff. And Dave just they just kept it was like a one chord vamp for a long time. And Dave was head banging, and wah, wah, wah. I was just, you know, repetition, you know, just going for repetition and a little bit of a variety here and there. Um, so, you know, that's what happens. People people call me up and like I wouldn't even I didn't even know he was going to call me up. I'd never played on that song before. Yeah. And he was just like, Danny's going to come up and play. And I was like, yeah, sure I am, you know, and, and it's happened, you know, before I, I, the first time I played with Bruce Springsteen, I was at this event called Light of Day in Asbury Park, which is raises money for Parkinson's research. And they have been for years. And um, more often than not, every year, Bruce Springsteen will show up and play with Joe Grishecki and, uh, and the House Rockers, who's uh a good friend of mine and just a really killer band and Bruce will come and play with them for a couple hours. And uh, so Joe had sat in with the Tangier's blues band a couple times and he was like, Hey Danny, you bring your harps tonight and you, you sit in uh, on our set. And I was like, okay. And I get there and Bruce is there. And like, sometimes he doesn't show up and sometimes he does. Well, he's already there and he's got a list of songs for the set list. And he's like, yeah, pick one of these songs. What do you think in here? We'll get you in here. And it's like, it's like the Bruce Springsteen section of the set list. And I was like, you want me to play in here? And he was like, yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. And I was like, okay, well, you tell him. I'm not telling him. And uh, so he's like, yeah, it's, it's all right. So they put me on the song Murder Incorporated, and, which Joe and Bruce wrote together. And, I, of course, I went out. I got on YouTube. I got my harmonicas that I had. And I was, like, figuring out the key. And I was like, okay, good. You know, it's an E. I'm going to play my A harp. Yeah. It's all good. I had three harmonicas with me. I had an A, I had a C, and I had a D. And so I was like, okay, this is gonna be cool. So I'm just basically, you know, almost peeing my pants. I'm like so nervous about it. And so uh, I know my time is about to come up. And so I get to the back of the stage, I'm kind of hanging out and, and they finish the one song and Bruce comes over to Joe and I see them whispering and they're like, they look at me and they wave me out and I start walking out and uh, they lean in and they're like, uh, we're going to do pink Cadillac in G. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> like, what if I don't have a, you know, uh, the right harp? I mean, they just changed it up. And yeah. I, I, I could have went really wrong. And uh, I ran back to my camera bag and grabbed my C harmonica. And, uh, and at the time I'd never played with Bruce and he said to the crowd, and I couldn't hear this cause I was running back to get my harmonica. He said, he said Danny Clinch, he's the great, greatest photographer. You know, he's like, and I can vouch for his photography, but I I don't have any idea. I can't vouch for his harmonica. <laughs> and I was like, thank God I didn't hear that, you know. And I came out, and he, they started the little vamp on on Pink Cadillac. It's just and he just gave me the nod, and he was like, go ahead. And I just kind of, yeah. I just, I'm either going to sink or swim, you know. And I just ripped into it, and I had the time of my life. Bruce was smiling at me, and having a great time. And it was literally like a, a nine minute version of pink Cadillac. Oh yeah. And uh, he, kept, he kept throwing me solos and it was the, it was the greatest day of my life at that, that point. That's like, yeah, some nice harmonica player stories, <laughs> especially with the I different keys. Of... Like, <laughs> And then, and then what happens is I definitely know that situation. I... <laughs> But then I tell Mickey Raphael, I'm like, hey, I was jammed with Bruce Springsteen last night. And he's like, just shakes his head. I'm like, I know it should have been you, but it was me. <laughs> and he goes, you sounded great. I heard it was great. But we have a laugh because, you know, Mickey, <laughs> you know, I, I just laugh. I'm like, what am I doing up there playing with Bruce Springsteen when it could be Mickey Raphael? And he's like, well, I wasn't there. And he says, you did a great job. I said, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so funny. Well, I remember having the wrong harp on stage and stuff like that. I'm always, I'm still picking up wrong key harps on stage. <laughs> oh my God. That's crazy. Um, funny question by Mick Crash. Um, did you start playing harmonica to connect with the artists? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Maybe subliminally. I don't know. I think um, I just wanted to play. I wanted to be a part of what was going on. And, and, yeah. and really, I really credit the blind melon moment for me where they said it doesn't matter man it's just 
you're going to do fine and nobody's going to know anything. You're just gonna, you're going to be in the right key. You can play the harp a little bit, you know, it's fine. And I went out there and I did it. And it's like, I don't know, you know, the, the question be between any musician, you know, like, oh man, I just like, I fucked up that one, that one chord or that moment I meant to do this. And, and we just got like, nobody heard it. You're the only one who knew that. You yeah. Know? And then I got to believe the same thing goes for me. You know, it's like in the middle of a big, loud rock and roll jam or blues or whatever, you know, and you you do a clam or what you just, you know, just keep moving. You know, that's what I think. I, I think that, you know, in the live moment, nobody, nobody really cares. It's, uh, you know, so so, it, you know, so once I was able to have this musical conversation with some of these artists, it really it did change things, you know, like uh I think that's a good question, Mike. I think that like it's, you know, after having played with some of these artists now and I see them somewhere, you know, they talk to me differently or they, you know, we're in a, we're in a conversation with a bunch of different musicians and they'd be like, you know, yeah, well, Danny knows, you know, he sat in with us when we did that thing and, you know, yeah. and then I feel included, you know, which is really nice. And, and to be honest, like with this camera too, that I carry around all the time, this is the Leica. Yeah. It's uh, the M series. It's a really, I mean, it looks big because I'm pushing it up in front of you, but it's really not that big. It's a very quiet, it's a very, um, you know, uh, gentle camera to have around while you're hanging out with people. And you can just be there and, you know, you're talking about music and you just, you know, you pick up the camera and you shoot a picture, you just put it down. And, it's, you know, it's like, it's, it's you know, it's like it's improvisation, like you said. Yeah. And I guess it's so important to like, keep it with you all the time because like these moments they are just moments like you gotta right. capture them in that very moment you can that's right can't just like and you know it's funny get back to yeah. it yeah i never thought about it but the fact that the, the fact that like like i carry this small camera around with me and the fact that i always have my harmonicas with me it's like i i'm ready for to improvise at any time with my camera or my harmonicas. Yeah. And you know, the thing is, is like, if you're a, you know, a guitar player, uh, you know, you just can't go to a show and carry your guitar in there. You know, it's gotta be really planned out. It's gotta be pre-planned and whatever. And so if you're just hanging out and you know, there's a little jam in the backstage area and you don't have a guitar, you just gotta sit back and enjoy it. But if I pull out a harmonica, and and just join in on the jam then the people are like oh shit well when, when we play that you just come out and you know get, yeah. with, get with it you know and so you know it's a different uh it's a very different kind of instrument it's a very um you know um social social instrument true i i had we have live music and that's the also the history of the instrument because like back in the days it was like a family instrument yeah Yeah. Yeah. The other day we had um, uh, a guy named Will Daly and he was playing at the gallery, uh, the transparent gallery that we have in Asbury Park. And he um, in the middle of his set was like um, we had talked about playing a tune together. And then he said, well, well, we'll come up. I, I got a different tune, but it's the same. It's the same harp. You know, there's come up. I, I got a, I got a plan. And uh, he played a song of his that was a, a, an original song. I had never heard the song in my life. I'd never played the song with him ever. And he just like started playing the song and he stepped away from the mic, which was like, okay, I'm gonna leave this for you. And I just started playing in the beginning and I was like found the melody and I was like creating my own melodies in there. And then I just saw him kind of start walking towards the microphone and I just laid out and let him go in and he did his thing. And there was a couple little call and response things in the middle. I was like, wah, 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 you know, there, step out, like play a little bit underneath a little something. And it was just like, and we finished it and we looked at each other. And we were like, man, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. We had never, ever played that song together before. We had never, I never heard it. I had never played it. We never practiced it. And we just played it in front of a bunch of people. And it was fantastic. It's, it's really, yeah. it's magic. And it's, it's, It's so good for, for, for my soul, like to be able to get up there and do it. And in fact, afterwards, a woman came up to us afterwards and she said, you know, um, you know, me as the, the, you know, and my wife Maria as the gallery owners, like she, she came up and said, you know, I'm so grateful that you guys have live music here because I had like a really terrible day. I had a hard day 
and like I was I was kind of just ending my day and decided to take a walk and I walked by the gallery and I heard the live music in there and I came in and it just really you know it soothed my soul and I really needed it you know and that's what music does for people you know it helps you celebrate your good times but it does help you get through your hard times too you know yeah and so it's really um it's it's none of it's lost on me and the fact that i get to photograph the people who make this music uh and then occasionally get to join them or even play with my own band uh or by myself is is uh is a real blessing for me yeah it's a wonderful yeah. thing um w would you say is there anything like the uh you learned being on stage something valuable that you can't learn yourself practicing alone like is there like a skill or whatever um i've i've learned that you know listening to what the others are doing is really important i mean i think that's probably obvious but yeah. maybe not those who don't really get to play so much maybe they just play in their bedroom or whatever but listening to what other people and and i know i've said it a bunch of times and i sound like a broken record but it is a it is a conversation you know it's a musical conversation and you have if you have somebody who you know you got to know like miles davis said it's not the notes you play it's the notes you don't play right so if you're in the room with someone and you're having a regular conversation and the person is dominating the conversation he doesn't let anybody talk He's not letting anyone else get a word in edgewise. He's just talking about himself, talking, 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 talking. You don't, you don't really, you walk away, you know? Yeah. And if somebody's doing that on the, the bandstand, somebody's up there on stage and they're just talking, 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 talking with their instrument, you're just going to be like, well, you know, forget it. I, I, I don't want, I don't want to listen to you anymore, you know? Yeah. And so that's one of the things that I learned. I learned by playing and then listening to myself afterwards, I'm going, oh my God, will you shut up? You know, like that's shut really up. good too. Yeah, like, leave some leave some breathing room. Like walk away so that when people hear the harmonica, they're like, "Oh yeah, I love the harmonica." They're not like, "Oh God, I'm tired of that harmonica." Yeah, and it reminds are... me of a story, a story that Mickey uh, Raphael told me, which was he was playing with um, uh, I think it was Charlie McCoy, you know great harmonica player and all around musician. I think it was Charlie McCoy and he was playing and Mickey was playing. And, uh, and at the time you could be up on stage, you know, with a cigarette and, you know, people are smoking cigarettes, people are playing their harmonica, drinking a beer whatever, you know? And, uh, and, and so, uh, after the set was over, uh, the guy, whoever it was came over to Mickey and said, Hey man, you know, maybe you should smoke another cigarette while you're up there, you know, in, instead of playing. You know, like, yeah. well, you take a little break, go get a cigarette break and come back and play, you know, because you're like, whoa, 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 you know. So that's what I've learned. <laughs> I've learned that, like, it's really about listening. It's like leaving some space. It's allowing others to talk, you know, or allowing others to play around you. And uh, I'm still learning that to this day. And I, 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 I know that I, you know, right now, I, I just recall I played with Pearl Jam at the See Here Now Music Festival that we put on in Asbury Park. And... I, I learned to just step away and, and like, and I, I'm not so nervous anymore. So I can, I can look around at the band and the players who are my friends and just really feel like really enjoy it. Like I look around like, yeah, this is great. I can't, I lock eyes with everybody like, yeah, like, thank you for having me up here. This is amazing. And, uh, so and before I, I remember when I first started playing in the blues band, uh, I would literally turn my back to the audience because uh, I oh, yeah. just was so embarrassed and so nervous. I just would be like, Wah. and then the, the singer would come over, King, he would come over to me and he would grab my shoulders and say <laughs> <laughs> But that's definitely wonderful advice like to everybody out there. Like first record yourself. That's very, very good as a beginner. And also like if I talk to students, like, It's an important question, like just asking people if they ever re ever played with somebody else together or if they just played by the, for themselves uh, makes a huge difference. Yeah. What um, 
somebody always tell you know everybody says something different about what you're listening to but i guess i don't know if it was dennis but i've listened to a lot of dennis does a lot of uh a lot of podcasts a lot of uh you know webinars and yeah i've listened to a bunch of them they're really cool and uh he did one um where somebody was just saying you're like you're listening to the bass and the drums like it's just like lock into the bass and the drums and don't listen to the guitar player or the singer or you know, i mean I that's so true because like rhythm is still way more important than rhythm. harmony that's right rhythm is king yeah yeah you can play the wrong notes all the time but if you have good rhythm you're definitely going to sound better than the guy having the right key harmonica in his hands but like no rhythmic feel at all yeah yeah um yeah so moving from the stage back from the stage like i'm thinking about like concert photography um do you think uh are there like any special challenges with concert photography compared to a regular studio session yeah you um you know it, it's all kind of it's funny it is all kind of rel relative you know it's like you're you know when you're photographing and you have the right access like i get i it's all about trust you know if you yeah. trust somebody to be there that they're not going to get in the way and they're not going to cause any trouble then you get to you get to be on the stage i get to be not only in the pit in the front but i can be on the side of the stage sometimes i'm even allowed to go behind the amplifiers or behind the drum kit and get in the mix there so that i can capture the artist the venue the whole thing all at once you know which is really exciting when that all comes together and so you have to be careful you can't get what you don't realize is you could be on the side of the stage but are you in front of the the sound guy or the monitor guy who needs to see the band and you're standing right in front of them taking pictures and then all of a sudden someone comes over and taps you on the shoulder like get out of oh, the yeah. way you know You don't want to be in, you don't want to be in the way of the guitar tech who in between songs is about to run a guitar out <laughs> to roll you know uh you don't want to get in the way of of um you know you really have to have a sixth sense about what's going on around you so you've got to have a working knowledge of what goes on on the stage sound people tour managers uh drum techs you know lighting people uh you know you don't want to be up there in a in a in a bright yellow shirt Like behind the drum kit, you want to wear a black shirt and a black, for me, a black hat, black shirt, you know, um, and you want to sort of, um, you know, you just kind of want to, um, you know, blend in and be transparent, invisible. Yeah. And, uh, and so. Yeah, that, that's, that's probably that's like the right. best feedback you can, you can get after a concert is like that nobody actually like felt that you were there, but you still captured the moments. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's important. And to have the dialogue with the artist, the artist can say to you, um, listen, I don't want to see you up there. You know, do what you can, do what you want, but like, don't get in my way. Don't distract me. Don't, there's a lot of things. And, um, and others will say, I don't care where you go. Just watch out that I don't swing around and crack you in the head with my, you know, guitar headstock or something. You know yeah so. <laughs> and obviously like the the whole business i would say changed with of course like everybody can take pictures with their phones right now um yeah. everybody can be an artist um so how did that change your work or uh how did, did that change your, your thoughts about it um um did it influence I, your work at all um no but you know what it makes me i like i like instagram i like a camera phone it doesn't bother me i i like uh i like the fact that people have been encouraged to look at the world a different way you know and to participate in in photography like people like to post things on instagram and you know some some of it's just content and it's just like a document of what's there or a picture of your dog or whatever but like other times people are posting things that are you know seeing some beautiful light come in a window or you know yeah. a shadow of something on the street and they're they're like they probably never thought about looking at the world that way i bet there's a lot of people who picked up a phone because it's just happened to be in their hand and it's so easy these days and realize like hey, I yeah, it's have wonderful really that it's accessible yeah. for everyone yeah, yeah. so You know, it doesn't mean that that person is 
you know, going to be taking any assignments away from me necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> but, but introduce people into a love of photography that they want to take to the next step or just enjoy as a, as a hobby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so how did you make that, uh, move from like, I mean, you're still focusing on photography, but you also stepped into filmmaking. Yeah. What was the reason for that? I mean, I just remember like my favorite filmmaker, David Lynch, he always just said he painted the picture and he just like tried to imagine that it moves. How, yeah. how was it for you? <laughs> um, well, a lot of my favorite photographers had made um, uh, documentaries. Um, Danny Lyon was, uh, is a great documentary photographer. He made a couple of films, Robert Frank made films. Um, and I just thought, you know, like I, I'd kind of like to make a film, you know, one of these days. And I ended up uh, doing a couple of small music videos. And then I did a, I did a film called Pleasure and Pain about Ben Harper. And um, so I just really got hooked. I really liked documentaries and I liked photographing music. You know, I liked doing concert films and things like that. So I've done, I've done, uh, you know, a uh, couple of Pearl Jam concert films, one called Imagine in Corniche, one called uh, Let's Play Two. I did a John Mayer film nom that was nominated for a Grammy and that was called um, uh, Where the Light Is. And I did a Foo Fighters, Skin and Bones. And then I did a bunch of other documentaries about, um, I did a, I just finished a documentary re recently about Shannon Hoon from Blind Melon, who passed away at a young age and was a friend of mine. And it's a very unique film in the sense that it's um, it's all of his own footage that he filmed along the way while he became famous. And it's, so it's all his footage and it's like it ends with his death, which is really sad, but it's it's a very interesting film. It's, a, it's an experimental film in, to a certain extent, but there's a story there as well. And, uh, and, a, and a film called A Tuba to Cuba, which I made with a friend of mine about um, about the Preservation Hall jazz band going to um, going to Cuba and the musical conversation that people have when they don't speak the same language, which is really yeah. interesting and are tied together through trade and slavery and jazz and, and music and, 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 and art and uh, and food and all that stuff. Um, so myself and uh, my friend uh, TJ Harrington made this film and uh, Ben Jaffe and it is um, it's a it's a cool film so I, I love I love filmmaking too it's very oh, yeah. time consuming for sure but yeah there's wonderful like just uh, basically showing all these connections uh, that have to do with music filmmaking yeah. because like it's not only the music but it has so much to do with the culture and the food and everything yeah um, so Another question I have, maybe one of the last ones, uh, is uh, what's the most important skill as a photographer or an artist in 2021? What's the most important skill? You know, I just think having an open mind is an important skill as an artist. Just taking everything in that you can and then you spit it out in your own way as, as art, you know, whether it's music or photography. You, you take your inspirations and you bring them into, into your head and heart and you sort of like mix it around and you, you spit it out as, as your own, you know? And I think it's, I think, you know, people are, in my opinion, you know, inspiration is so important and, you know, you're, I'm never going to be, you know, Ansel Adams, you know, because we're just two different people from two different places and, um, although I would love, love his work, I would never be him. So I take in what I learned from Annie Leibovitz or Jim Marshall or any of the great photographers that I love. And, you know, I, I put their information into my head and then I just put it out in my own way. So, uh, I think it's fine. And musically, you know, like I'll never be able to play, a, you know, little Walter note for note, but there'll be things in there that I'll sneak into my repertoire, uh, that, you know, only 
you know, maybe only some of the real aficionados will recognize that I <laughs> yeah. stole, stole that lick, you know? But there Everybody are definitely else, a few people out there who are. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you know, if Dennis is in the room, then, you know, you're screwed. But, uh, you know, if you steal a lick, you know, he'll know it. But, um, but you know, most music lovers in the room are there to have a good time and hear music. And if you, if you, can, if you can weave in a, a Junior Wells lick into the set and it sounds great, people are just going to think it's fantastic. Yeah. So how do you feel about the future of the harmonica then and blues harmonica? Uh, I mean, you know, it's lasted this long. I mean, if you think about music in general, you know, music has been around as long as, you know, people have been around and, uh, you know, yet uh, recorded music has always has only been here for a hundred years. So if you think about about that and you think about how, you know, how much longer music, uh, you know, in the way it is being done now will be around. I mean, I, I don't think, you know, it certainly isn't going away, but you can see how technology changes uh, the way things are, uh, music is made. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, there's so much electronic stuff going on right now. And, and uh, to me, it doesn't matter if it's electronic or if it's, analog or but if it just matters if i like it or not and uh the same with you know whether it's hip-hop or rock and roll or jazz or classical or whatever it might be if it's good it's good in my opinion and i think you know for me the future of harmonica is just me just digging deep and trying to just be better at the instrument um and just being able to get out into the world and play it uh, i feel lucky to be able to play with you know the musicians, um, you know, that, that I've gotten to play with. Uh, I feel like the gallery has all these great musicians coming through and I often get asked to ask, asked to come up and play. And, and it's not blues, you know, even that yeah. tune I jumped in, I was telling earlier, this wasn't a blues song, you know? And so I'm, I'm starting to, you know, get all Mickey Raphael on it out there. I'm like playing some, some jazz, I'm playing some country, I'm playing some blues, some rock and roll, some folk, you know, it feels good. It feels good just to, you know, to just learn and keep learning, you know, and it's just when you can keep learning and keep breaking through another wall and breaking through another thing that you used to struggle with. And then you just just put that behind you and you're on to the next thing, you know, so it's always a struggle. But you then then you have more to draw from in your, uh, you know, to, to pull out of your bag and and uh, share with everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking about it. Who knows? Like maybe there will be also like new ways of like capturing music. I don't know. I mean, you have there was notated music. Now you can record it. What's next? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I love seeing people come out and like uh, you know, there's a one man band and they come out and they do like a little tapping on their guitar and they loop it so they oh, get yeah. the you know they get the they get the rhythm and then they loop a little guitar lick or a rhythm and then they start playing over top of it and singing and all that. And it's like, I, I, you know, it's interesting to see where it goes. No doubt about it. Did, did you ever visit a harmonica festival? Um, I have not visited a harmonica festival. I did. Um, no, no, I haven't. Uh, I've no, I haven't. I would like to. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. I did a workshop though. I did a workshop, uh, down in, um, Mississippi, I think. And it was, um, you know, I know it was Adam Gussow and it was, um, uh, uh, what's his name from new Orleans. The, just the craziest character. And Jason Ritchie. Player. Yeah. I love that guy. What a crazy character. And he's just, you know, he's next level for yeah. sure. He was one of the instructors. And of course, you know, listening to him teach is like, I don't know, like I, you know, it's like if you ever watch the Junior Wells instructional video, he's like, yeah, you know, you just, you just play it like this. <laughs> You're like, okay, great. Um, but Jason was awesome to listen to. And, and it was, uh, it was, it was a good time. And I, I encourage people to go to workshops and interact with people and, you know, share what they know and, and then, you know, soak up what other people have to offer. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful to exchange. I mean, this is the way right now, but 
I hope like some of the festivals are happening like on site again. Uh, yeah. But it's yeah. wonderful to stay in touch with the music scene and the harmonica world online here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. What um, um, what harmonica festival should I go to? Wow. I mean, probably the one, the Hona Festival in Germany, but that's only happening in every four years. The Got big it. one. Um, yeah. But it's really worth it then. Um, yeah, yeah. At the same time, the festivals in Asia are very big. And I mean, it's a crazy experience because, of course, the culture is different and how the how the players learn the instrument is um, completely different. Um, yeah, interesting. Very exciting to check out the South Korean Harmonica Festival. Of the Asian Pacific Harmonica Festival, which is like traveling around Asian countries. Um, yeah. That's very special. Yeah. But I, at the same yeah. time, that's the only festival probably I had never visited up until now. It's just the spa festival in the US. So I hope I can get out there very soon. <laughs> That'll be fun. Right on. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I mean, I usually we, we close this off with with music. Everybody wants to hear some harmonica playing. But there are also yeah. so many links in the description box. Um, yeah. So everyone out there, you can check out Danny's website and the Transparent Gallery in Asbury Park. Um, maybe check it out on site if you're in New Jersey. And... Yeah. Um, Check out our Instagram. Follow us on our Instagram and our Facebook and stuff. And all know? that fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Easy to find. Okay. Is there another question by Mick? I'm not sure. Being in a band for years, Danny, you got it. What it takes to play with a band. Oh, yes. We did talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. So... There's one last announcement I have to make. I told you earlier about this too. We have the monthly harmonica challenge on Twitch going on. And it's going down on November 28th, I think, this month. Um, at 6 p.m. Central European time. Um, this time it's going to be a Stevie Wonder challenge. We have three categories, beginner, inter intermediate, and advanced players and I think this time we can give away a chromatic harmonica, which is crazy. Um, very big prize this time. Um, our special guest and um, judge will be Tolak Olestad from the Netherlands. He lives in the Netherlands. He's from the US. Um, fantastic chromatic harmonica player. He was on the Hono Live too. Um, also a great singer. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm going to upload an announcement video next week. Um, probably gonna record a Stevie Wonder song too. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's what's happening. Um, Great. Thank you so much. I mean, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for having me. Bye everybody. Cheers. See you in two Bye, weeks. Everybody. Bye bye.